I am Jerry Tyson. In this video I'm going to be showing you just how little code it takes to get your servo moving with Parker's automation controller of the pack. I'm also going to be showing you how the visualizations can help make your development much easier. Let's get started. When you launch the Parker Automation Manager software, you're first presented with the start page. From here you can select a new project. Choose a standard project and let's title it Video Demo. Click OK. Now it's going to create a POU of your default type. Mine is set to ladder logic. You'll see it creates a tree structure on the left hand side. We're going to click on device and have it look on the network for our controller. So let's click scan network. You should find it. We'll click on it and we're connected. Now let's go online. Select the EtherCAT master, and we'll have it go out there and look and see what modules and axes have been added to it. So you right click, scan for devices. Once it finds them, you can copy all devices to the project. Once those are in the project tree list, then we can save. And once that's saved, we can go offline. Now let's rename the axis. Let's call this axis axis 1. And we'll have to say yes to refactoring to make sure it's the same throughout the entire system. Now let's look at the scaling. The server we're using today has a 19 bit absolute encoder. So if we go to our calculator and we put in 2 raised to the 19th power we'll see that it is 524,288. You can copy that and paste that into the field. Now it doesn't like the comma, so we have to delete that. Now I don't have any transmission, so we're going to set the output here to be 360 degrees per revolution. Okay, now our scaling's done. Let's move the program up to the EtherCAT master scan. Any program that has motion commands needs to be in the EtherCAT master scan. All right, let's write the program. Okay, in our first rung, we're going to put in an empty box, and then we're going to call it MC Power. Put that in the database. We'll set our axis to axis one. Set the enable for the block to true. We want it on all the time. We'll set our tag to be A1 underscore enable for the B regulator on and the B drive start. On the output we'll put a coil and we'll label it A1 underscore enabled. Now we don't need anything else so we're going to right click and remove unused parameters. In the next rung we're going to put in another empty box and this is going to be MC underscore jog. So again we'll put in our axis create A1 underscore forward and A1 underscore reverse and then put in tags for our velocity acceleration and for the deceleration In this simple example we don't need anything for jerk matter of fact we're just gonna remove all the rest of the unused parameters now that is all the code you need to get motion on this controller. So let's go ahead and go online. And you'll see that the controller is off, so let's start the CPU. Let's fold up the tag definitions. Now we can force on the enable. Now remember you have to use F7 to activate the forces. Now let's put in some values for the jog velocity, the jog acceleration, and the jog deceleration. And again we have to use F7 to force those values. We can then force the forward and voila we have motion. Now to unforce you can right click choose to remove the force. We're actually going to go offline and remove all forces because we can do better. We're going to add a visualization which is basically a virtual HMI. 
we first need to add a visual manager and activate the symbol libraries and then we need to add a visualization let's call it main okay now under the web manager click on web visu and let's set the start visualization to main alright let's clean up some of this get rid of some of these tabs and let's start creating our virtual HMI so we first need a power switch and let's put on an indicator let's make it a little bit smaller to show when the servo is enabled okay let's align these two vertically and let's set the variable for the indicator we want to tie that to application PLC prog a1 enabled alright and let's set the color to green okay now the power button set the variable to a1 enable okay let's get some jog buttons I like the ones with the LED indicators so we'll need two of these copy and paste and let's get them aligned with the power button alright let's set the variable this needs to be A1 forward now we have to remember to set the element behavior to image tapper because we want these to be momentary buttons for the jog and the same for the reverse okay let's set up some labels for them so grab the label FWD let's resize it and let's make a copy of it for the reverse let's do a little alignment get those two aligned with each other and then we can align them with the individual buttons okay let's put in some text fields for input to our jog parameters let's set this one to jog velocity and we need to set the format of the number the text text field we're going to put in a percent 6.2f that's six numbers in front of the decimal two after and of course floating point now let's define the input configuration so we want to move down to on mouse enter and we want to set it to right variable and then we'll just choose text input okay alright so now we got one set up let's make multiple copies of this one of these will wind up being the position variable and the others are going to be the uh, acceleration deceleration parameters of the jog so we'll get everything aligned and then we need to go back and uh, make sure we change the variables I'm going to change this one to XL jog XL so the jog D cell and this one we're going to set to the actual position so it's not a variable we created it's part of the structure that is built into the axis reference so we're going to go down here to the IO config globals axis one and come down to the L reels and get actual position there we go and we need to come down and cut off the ability to write that because we don't need to write that so we will take that off great okay let's create some labels for our jog parameters 
one for the jog velocity and then a couple more deceleration acceleration here let's just get them all the same size and align them and put them horizontally aligned with their text fields alright let's set up a little visualization that will show us where the shaft is under SM3 basic we've got this rope drive we put in the axis name axis 1 okay now that's going to show us an indication where the motor is let's get this lined up underneath it and align together okay that should work so let's uh, go online It'll compile and download. Now this time our little programs will be much easier to control because our visualization is basically going to be a virtual HMI that's going to allow us to do the control without having to do any forcing. So we're going to start the CPU and we can double click on this tab to undock it. We can move it around, get it out of our way here and then we can watch the program as we do it. So we first enable the drive. We see that it's enabled. And what we got to get in some parameters. So we'll put in 360 3600 and 3600 for the D-cell. And then you can see we can jog it forward. and jog it reverse. So that's a real simple example of how to get motion on the pack and also showing the power of the visualization that's built into the Parker Automation Manager. And we can double click to redock this. And I think you'll agree that this is a very simple program for getting motion. In later videos we'll go into more in-depth applications. So be sure to like and subscribe.